Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem and this is the brand new Arduino Uno R4 with a new 32-bit processor. But before we switch our projects to that new chip, we should give the old one a proper farewell. The 80 Mega 328P is quite capable and we try to make it into a full computer, just like this one. It seems that a lot of people forget that the microcontrollers that we use on our Arduinos are actually little computers. Back in the day, before everything got 32 and 64-bit, 8-bit computers, those were real computers. Like the CX81 that runs a C80 processor. And guess what? The 80 Mega 32HP on the Arduino Uno that we all know and love is quite capable as a computer. So at least as capable as this awesome machine. So, for our farewell project, let's try to make an Arduino Uno based handheld computer that does the same thing as the ZX81. So, keyboards, text output, and basic as an operating system. When I started tinkering around with Arduino, the most impressive project for me was running Tiny Basic on an Arduino. It's the complete basic operating system, or the programming environment actually, so it's a prompt where you enter commands and then the computer executes those commands running just on that little chip. There's an Arduino version of Tiny Basic, of course, to do that, and it leaves us with one kilobyte of RAM and one kilobyte of EEPROM space, which is coincidentally the same amount that we would have on the ZX81. So we should be able to make a comparable machine. But at the same time, that basically uses up all the uh, capacity that this little chip has. So to make it a completely handheld version, we would have to make have a second processor that handles keyboard and drives the LCD screen. Uh, so let's put another 80 Mega 328P in there and let them interact with each other over serial. So one drives the exterior and the other one just runs the operating system. And how big should it be? Well, this is a already really small computer, but I think it should be a little bit smaller so I can hang it around my neck at conferences. So it should be badge sized. For the input, we are going to make our own keyboard, a tiny one for the thumbs. Uh, coincidentally, we did some projects about Charlie plexing buttons and LEDs as if it was a setup for that episode. <laughs> what a coincidence. Okay, and also for uh, the output, I want to have a screen, an LCD screen, a character LCD, because that feels the most period correct to me. And also it's great for reading and it's a bit easier to interface. Also 8-bit parallel interface seems retro appropriate. And coincidentally, I think we will use up all the pins on the Arduino. So that would be my first project that actually uses all the Arduino pins at once. So we could make a PCB that has only the buttons on there and the screen and put two Arduino Unos on the back to make them just plug in. But that would be a lot bigger than I want and also I want to have included batteries and stuff. So let's make a custom PCB and move the chips off from the Arduino onto that PCB which is the actual intention of an Arduino. So you develop your prototype on the Arduino and then you use the same chip that is already on there in your final design. So we go that step, basically the practical application of what an Arduino Uno R3 was intended for. Let's hop over to KiCad because we have a lot of work in front of us. Welcome to KiCad and the layouts for my PCV. So as you can see, this uh, has two sub sheets. First, we are looking at the main sheet. This is the 80 mega that basically runs the show. Then we have here is the connector where the screen connects. This is a standard pin out for an HD44780 uh, compatible screen. And this is my keyboard array. As you can see, all the pins have 75 ohm resistors on there. Uh, these are currently emitting resistors for the LEDs on there. And if we look at that 
schematic, we can see a familiar schematic that you've seen in a previous video. This is the button and LED array that we discovered in the episode about Charlie Plexing. Can we get this here? Which is our board in 3D and it looks like that on the back side. So here's where the, the batteries go in. That looks quite cool. We have some holes where you can put uh, in a lanyard so you can hang it around your neck because it is a badge, basically a conference badge. That's just a tiny little computer, which I think is freaking cool. But I want to have a case around that. So that is also something we have to do. Of course, for time reasons, we only show you the main points of the PCB design and also the main points of the code. And if you want to see the full versions of how I made these, then hop on over to the Element 14 community and we have some bonus content on there for free. Just go there and also you can download all these files in case you want to make your own version. Thanks to Isla for providing the boards for this project. I ordered this one first and then I encountered, I want to put an SAO, a shitty add-on header on there or simple add-on handler, how it's now called, uh, so I can put additional badges on my badge. Badge life, basically. So I made the second version that already has that header on here. And coincidentally, I also passed the requirements for better boards. So I got it in Enic, which is always the best choice. I have two oscillators on here, both running at 16 megahertz. In theory, I should be able to get by with just one for both of these chips, but I don't have any experience with that, so I keep them separate just in case to make sure everything works. You may be able to do a little botch and just omit one of these to save some money if you want to build your own version. Size-wise, I think we have met the goal. This is not even a quarter of the size of the original device. So we've met that goal, but now it's time for the code. So on one of my 80 mega 328Ps, I just run Tiny Basic. I don't even have to alter the basic build any further because I already decided to use PB5 or the pin 5 for my buzzer on there. So it has sound output. And that is the standard pin that Tiny Basic uses for that. So I already thought about that. Then it just has RX and TX connections to the other pin. So our focus in programming is the second 80 mega that runs the LEDs, the buttons and the screen. This is the code that runs on the 80 mega 328P that does not run Tiny Basic because the other one just runs Tiny Basic vanilla as it is and uh, input output is over UART. And this is the other one. This is basically the keypad. So every element in this array is one of these buttons. So the buttons are numbered in sequence and the main loop, this is already is the main loop. So everything else is in functions. We read one group after the other, then we convert what we've read. So we have to, uh, we know which buttons are active, convert that to the characters that we need. Then we display that on the display and also send that over to the basic MCU. And then we read what we get back from basic. And then it loops over and over again. That is the code. Let me know how to make it better because I'm absolutely sure there are plenty of ways to make this better. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. Programming was quite a bit of work uh, and then the screen didn't work. I could not put out any serial debug messages because there is no USB to UART bridge on this device. I didn't even really expose the RX and TX lines, they just go in between both of the chips. So my only way is to put out messages on the screen, but the screen is not working. Well, how are we going to solve that? Did I wire up something wrong? So I used the LEDs to output messages, basically blink whenever some uh, step in the boot process has been finished. So I know the screen is set up correctly. So what is happening? It's the contrast potty. Uh, I used a 10 turn potentiometer with 10K on there, like it's recommended. Uh, and turns out 
I just need to turn it a lot more than I thought. I, I've already thought I have broken that potentiometer. No, it's just you have to like really crank it until you get into the space where the screen actually shows something. So if you have trouble with an, an HD44780 uh, capable screen, it could be just a contrast potentiometer. Try that first before messing with all the other stuff. So why do I have all these LEDs on the keyboard? First, some of them are used as diodes, like we've learned in the episode about Charlie Plexing button matrices that we did before on this show. And some of them I want to use just like a matrix, basically, like LEDs that basically extend the capability of the device. So it's just not text on the screen, but you could also play like snake on the keyboard. That was just some weird idea I had. Uh, trouble is, I can't address all of them. I can address the first rows, but not the last ones. Why is that? Okay, in code everything seems to work fine, but not in practice. And I think I got a solution. Like when you look really, really, really close at an 80 mega 328p in SMD form factor and in DIP form factor, there's a tiny difference. The SMD one has two pins more. And as I said, I've used all the pins, even those. They are not broken out on a normal Arduino Uno, but why? So I have sifted through the documentation and turns out the reason they are not broken out on a normal Arduino Uno is because they are only usable as inputs. These are used for analog inputs only. And on an Arduino, you can configure every pin as an input and an output to make it less complicated for the user and have less hiccups. But I just used all the pins that I found on the chip, which was a bit of an error. Uh, I need those lines. I need more lines, actually. So my solution to make these LEDs drivable is to make a bodge. I reuse pins that I used in the upper rows for lower rows. So I quickly soldered uh, some bodges on there. And turns out now all the addressing works. Let's move on to making the keyboard readable. The keyboard code is also quite complicated. Uh, basically, there are a lot of matrices that hold all the actual symbols that each key produces. They basically are in order from 1 to 50, so the number of the key correlates to what it does. And if you change those settings in the uh, arrays, then you basically change whatever the key does. So it's referenced by the matrix, it's referenced by the function that scans all the keys and basically gives back which number of keys active and that key is then matched to its symbol, which is a pretty nice principle, uh, but it doesn't work as I want. I can only access all the keys up until number seven or the seventh key in each row. Why? <sighs> okay, boys and girls, you won't get what it is. It's my bodges. Okay, the lines that I used to make the LEDs work, those are already used on the keyboard. And guess what? They connect always to the seventh entry in my keyboard matrix. That's why everything beyond that is not working because they are already cross-linked to a different... Yeah, uh, yeah. Basically, the bodge that makes the LEDs work makes the keyboard not work because I just have two more pins. I don't have them on there. Okay, so we can now decide do we need the addressable LEDs or do we need a working keyboard? I'd say we need a working keyboard. So let's remove those bodges and move on. Oh God. The dumbest thing that could happen to you is when you actually need more pins to do your thing, but you're at the same time wasting pins on buttons that you aren't really using. So I feel very dumb for that. I need to find a, a, a solution for that. And it hit me. I showed James the bald engineer, a guy who is a lot better in engineering than me, uh, what I've already done. And then he said, does it do it like the ZX uh, did it? Like the ZX Spectrum and the ZX81? And I was, what do you mean? What does that thing do? And it actually, it does a thing. It doesn't only use the buttons as just the one symbol. There's full functions like go to, load, list, that's like on the buttons so you don't have to ha uh, type the full command you just press one button and it enters the command so the secondary mode 
for this computer would be to code directly in the code words. And that is a really good use for such a small keyboard. So that is what we're going to do with all those buttons so they don't go to waste. So I implemented all those keywords on there and then um, basically that breaks everything. Nothing works, it doesn't compile anymore. You know why? I, it took me a long time to figure that out because I ran out of space. So I'm not only using uh, all the IO, I'm also using all the space on the chip. So uh, there's an easy solution that frees up a ton of space on there. You know what? When you have an array of strings, don't call it that, especially if it doesn't change. Don't call it an array of strings, call it a constant character array, because that one takes up a lot less space. There it is. So we have an assembled PCB with code that mostly works, um, but I can't really hang that around my neck. Well, I could, like all the badges are just PCBs on lanyards, but there is no writing on the keypad, so I don't even know what button does what, because I, I didn't think about a keyboard layout when I designed a PCB, I had to get that done quickly. Um, so that's all an afterthought. So we're going to make a case for it. And I also want to make like a compliant keypad overlay because some of you guys requested that in a previous video. So let's turn up over to FreeCAD and do about, uh, I don't know, 80 hours of CAD work. One eternity later. Many hours in CAD and a lot of 3D printed prototypes later, which got me closer and closer to the desired uh, function or mechanism of the keyboard, I have an assembled piece and it is here. <laughs> it's a little computer on a badge. And guess what? It boots. Look at my badge. My badge is amazing. I've always been really envious of Lorraine and Katie. They both had badges at Maker Fair when I met them and they had screens and stuff and stuff was blinking on there and I had nothing. So now I have a thing and I made it myself. And I already ripped the cord. Alrighty. <laughs> I also had a little code hiccup before when I program in some uh, program and run it and it doesn't end then the screen wouldn't show anything because the device waits for uh, a line feed command before it displays, so it waits for the full message to arrive, then displays it on the screen. And if that command never comes, then well, there is nothing to display. So we are basically just getting in raw data and printing it directly to the screen now, which could have saved me a lot of work if I had done that uh, from the very beginning but it would have been a lot more complicated in debugging because at first this showed only some garbage. But now it tells us that we have 999 bytes free of RAM, a bit under a kilobyte, uh, but we can actually type on the board and press enter and then it does it. And it says what, because I just entered some garbage. Well, let's uh, try it out and write some programs. As you can see, it constantly blinks here all the LEDs on the keyboard. That is basically, you can see how it scans the keyboard because the dials on there are LEDs. So I think this is a nice touch. It looks nice. It's not what I intended because I wanted this to be a controlled matrix, uh, but turns out it's kind of like blinking lights on one of these old mainframes. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's neat. You can pretend that you can see the bits doing their thing on here. Well, we have a hello world, we can make tones with the little speaker, and we also have this little header, which uh, can take up add-ons for badges. And there are GPIOs on there, and a I2C port that we can control directly over BASIC. So if we use a function that is in here in this tiny BASIC version for Arduino, like digital write or digital read, then we can do this on these pins here. So we actually have a bit of IO. At the moment, the only way to get data on and off here is typing it in and reading it from the screen. But maybe we can make some add-ons in the future. Let me know if you would like to see some further projects with this or a, a similar concept. The function that I'm most proud of on this 
is actually shifting and then being able to delete something when you have messed up. So being able to delete your entry, correct it and then send it is really cool and it was quite complicated to make. Check out the full uh, code breakdown on the Element 14 community to see how I did that. And now I have my badge and I can wear it with a badge prideiness. We have created, I think, the best farewell project for the Arduino Uno R3 by using all the pins, all the space on there to make a handheld computer as capable as a ZX81 from the 80s. So it's truly a computer. What is the craziest Arduino project you have ever seen? Like the most outrageous thing, the most powerful thing that anyone could imagine building just with an Arduino. Let me know on the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.